Hi, Shannon here from HouseImprovements.com and I'm back today to show you how to tile a shower wall. Okay, so we're going to apply ceramic tile uh, to this, this wall here. We've already done the niche, that's a separate video, so if you want to see how to tile a uh, shower niche, then you can check that video out. Um, so with your, with your tiling process, uh, one of the most important things to do is pre-plan uh, before you get your mortar mixed and all that kind of stuff. It's also very helpful if you can have uh, one of these portable uh, crosshair type lasers as well uh, because it'll save you a ton of time of of uh, your figuring out your layout and everything. So, so this one here I've got I can shoot a vertical line and a horizontal line as well. I don't know if you can see the horizontal line down there. So I use that for my basic setup, uh, my layout to get things figured out. In this, in this uh, case, we're basically, the majority of the tiles are going to be these uh, 12 by 24s. And uh, I'm just going to stagger them at a, at a half tile sort of stagger. So I, went, I just went ahead and figured out how I best wanted to set that up. And in, in our case, we're going to start with a full tile centered on the, on the back wall. We're doing the back wall first. And uh, then in our next row, which is where the niche would have been, there would have been the joint here. So I just have to, and I'll, it'll go back and forth from there. The, uh, so like I said, it's just important. And you can see I've got some marker lines here just as reference. So if I bump the laser or have to move it, I can find a mark again and get, get myself lined up. But uh, it just will be way more helpful for you if you can do it that way. You could, Simply do this all with a marker and a level and, and do the same thing uh, if that's all you have. But if you have a chance to use one of these lasers, it'll help you out a lot. Um, so you can see we've already waterproofed the shower. That, that's another video. Uh, I've attached, uh, I know we're just dealing with the back wall right now, but we will be doing the side walls. And, and I would say that you should start with the back. And the reason being that... Um, I'll just grab a couple small pieces here. The reason I like to do the back first is because from people coming in the bathroom can't see the joint. Actually, I'll do it over here, I guess. Can't see this back corner joint as easy if you do the back wall first. So the back wall tiles will be back there and these ones will butt into it. So the, the grout joint, sorry, the grout joint itself you see more from this angle instead of from this angle and it just looks better hides it and looks more finished so that's why I always do the back wall first put those noisy suckers down um, so I've got got the mortar mixed that's another video as well you can check out uh, I've got the first row of tiles cut here so that I can kind of get everything laid out from there um, I'm also going to be putting this uh, quadrac um, metal edging basically trim work around the niche here so I've got that all pre-cut it's just cut to the inside measurements here of the, of the niche of the niche tiles actually and then you buy these little corners that go into it so so this would be the bottom piece it would sit on here in place and then you have your side piece sits down onto that corner like so you could if you wanted you could use a, a electric miter saw and you could actually miter these corners on these pieces and not buy these purchase these corners if you want to um, I just find that the corners make a nice nice finish so so we'll be kind of putting these pieces in as we go as well uh, I think it's important to mention with your tiles uh, like I said, these are 12 by 24s, but not all tiles are actually the exact dimension. Uh, these are actually uh, 23 and a half long, I believe, and 11 and 3 quarters wide. So don't, when you go to do all your laying out, get a tile out, actually measure it because you want to know exactly what it is. And you also have to consider what you're using for a, for a space in your grout lines. We're going to be using eighth inch, so that's all factored in there as well. Okay, uh, I think that's uh, the main things I could talk about. So I've just gone around and masked off the tub 
and it's got its plastic protective layer on it still so that uh, we can clean it up easy and uh, keep the mortar off it. We're using a modified mortar in this case because of the substrate we're going over, which is a, a Dietra, or a, sorry, a Curdy board. And uh, so we need to use modified thin set. Uh, with these, this size of tile, I'm using a quarter inch by quarter inch notch trowel. That's uh, a little dirty because we were using it already for the niche, but quarter inch by quarter inch. And that should be sufficient for these tiles that we're using. Okay, um, I think we're pretty much ready to start out. So I've got my, got my laser, I've got it on the center right now, so that's good. And I'm going to just apply mortar basically from this row down for now, just so we can get this row started and, and everything going. Okay. So to first start off, what you want to do is basically uh, uh, apply the mortar to the surface on the wall and and basically uh, embed it into the surface so that you're getting making sure you're getting a good bond. You don't want to just kind of slap it on and start notching it right away. You want to actually get it impregnated into the surface. So with the flat edge of the trowel, we're just applying some here and basically kind of skim coating the surface. I'm pressing it to embed it into the fibers of this material that's here. And you can see already I've started to cover up some of the marker lines I had. I don't have to worry because I, I know with the reference lines I've got I can put my laser on again and uh, get myself all lined up. Even with my marks gone. So. Okay, so let's do this surface. So I'm not really leaving like any kind of a thickness there. I'm basically just troweling it flat off, but getting it pressed into the into the surface. Okay, so I've got that all pressed on. Now I can add, oops. Uh, now I can put some on there and actually put some trowel marks on it, in it, I mean. So I'm holding my trowel at about, all oh, around a well, 45 degree angle or so to the surface. So I'm getting the full benefit of my uh, height of my notches and my trowel. Like so, when all my notches go in the same direction, if all, at all possible. pretty good and I, like I said I've got this pre-cut hopefully it all fits in there um, this piece is my bottom I'm just gonna put a little bit of mortar kind of in the end of that and stick one of those ends in get it all lined up there Water just kind of keeps it from rattling around in there. Once it's all grouted, it'd be fine anyways, but. And just make sure I have enough mortar there for it to bond to. I'll just basically get it in place. I'm putting it basically flush to the top of here. up. I'll just gently push it in there for right now. Okay, now my first tile I'm gonna um, put into place, like I said, is this full size tile, but I don't want to just slap it on the wall the way it is here. I want to back butter this back surface 
it just basically fills in the, the texture that's on the back and make sure that you're getting a bond to what's on the wall. So just get some on there and you want to use the, the flat edge of your trowel to basically, kind of like what I did on the wall, just basically uh, coat the whole entire surface. So I'm not really leaving any amount of it there. I'm kind of putting it on and taking the majority of it off. Getting lots on me. It's kind of awkward trying to sit here the right way and show you what I'm doing. Um, if you get any that's plopped over on the edge like that, just try to clean up most of that as you go as much as you can. I should have had a damp um, sponge here would have helped. And this tile's going here, so I'm just going to set it on the edge of the tub, just a little ways away from the wall, until I can get it roughly vertical and then slide it into position. And get it where I like it. Now my layout here is a little tight. Normally I like to have a little more space than that above the tub. I'm hoping I can get this 16th inch spacer in there just to lift it up off the tub a little bit. So I'll just try to get it up on there. Like so. Make sure I'm not pushing this up too high. Make sure any mortar that I had at the back there oozing out isn't going to be a problem. Lining it up where I wanted it. Oops, I'm in the way of my laser. There, so that's where we want our first one. We did get it up off the tub. You can see that little bit of space along the bottom. And we should be in pretty good shape there. So now our other ones are basically the same idea. So this is going to be my one over here. I'll just double check that it's, yeah, I've got plenty short enough. And do the same thing. Back butter the back and get it in position. Okay, so we've got back buttered. You can see I've got basically the entire surface covered. A little bit around the edges isn't, but that'll be fine. Uh, I'm probably going to be in the way for you to see this one, but I'm really just doing the same thing to get it in place and started. of these tiny spacers. This isn't the space I'm using on the rest of the wall, but it's just enough to get it up off the tub. Okay, so this is where my, um, my grout line that I'm really trying to keep equal, and I've got eighth inch spacers for that one. As you get going, you'll probably kind of do it by eye, but to get yourself started out, it's a good idea to use a spacer and make sure you're getting yourself started straight. Like so. I'm just looking at my level line there. Looks pretty equal across here. So that's good. I had to pull my shim out down here because it was lifting this tile up a little too high on this corner, which was making this gap uneven. So those are the sorts of things you got to play with a little bit. That's why I usually like to have a little more space here because uh, most tubs aren't completely flat on that surface. And if your tub maybe is not 100% level, it all comes into, all comes into play there. Heck of a mess. <clears throat> okay, 
guess so this should be this way. <clears throat> there and that tile's kind of rocking a little bit so I'm gonna have to build up a little bit of mortar in this corner so I'm just gonna pull this out get it out and actually that's a good thing I did because I wasn't getting real good bonding you can see here on the tile we're maybe getting I don't know maybe 60% if, if we're lucky there's a little bit of high spot in a couple spots the tile could be cupped a little bit so we weren't actually getting any contact right there. So I'm just going to put a little bit in there. I'm going to trowel it the opposite direction of what's on the wall, just to help out a little bit. And I needed a little bit more up in this corner to get it to sit right. I'll try it again. already tell it's not rocking it's sitting better there okay so it's a good idea to pull one off every now and again make sure you're getting enough contact you want a good 80 to 90 percent direct contact okay and I've got the same situation there I'm not going to put a shim in so I can try to keep that line as straight as I can we should be good there okay so now I'm going to measure what I need for pieces here and cut them and come back and we'll put another row on. Okay, so uh, we did a little bit, as you can see over here off camera, I'm going to do this corner. Really all the same thing. Uh, get the mortar on the wall, back, to, back butter the tiles. Uh, we do have other videos on uh, different tools for cutting tiles, so we aren't really showing too much in this video about the actual cutting. Uh, but you can see our other videos on using wet saws and uh, tile snap cutters and that sort of thing. Oops, this needs to be this way. And if your thin set sits on the wall or in the bucket too long, uh, you know, since you applied it or whatever, uh, it's a good idea to give it a mix or if it's on the wall, comb over it again. Just to get it kind of activated again. What do we got going on here? Do, do, do. Put my other top piece of metal on there as well in the corners. Just a little adjustment there. There we go. It's kind of hung up on itself here. I was wondering why I was having troubles getting it to line up. too wide so I'll have to recut that tile it must be just a little slightly off centered so I'll have to recut that tile but I should be able to put the one above it I think so let's do that here hopefully this one's right I should have double checked it yeah, this one's going to be all right. Uh, 
Okay, so that one's okay. Growth space there is pretty good. And that's over as far as it goes, so I just need to recut that tile, so. Okay, we're back. It's not the same day. As you can tell, there's been a lot more work accomplished here since you last seen me two seconds ago. Um, so what happened yesterday, we kind of ran out of time. Yes, as you know, I'm human and I cut things wrong. So as we went along yesterday, I was putting uh, some tile trim, some edging around this window. It was the end of the day, I cut it all wrong and it was too late to go down and pick a new piece up, so I didn't have any. Uh, in the interest of keeping this project kind of moving and keeping the video flowing, I decided to push ahead and uh, did a lot more tiling off, off screen. So there's a couple things I wanna talk about. Uh, we will get to finishing this wall down around the plumbing and drilling some holes and stuff, but uh, I just wanna talk about a couple things that I did go ahead and do over here uh, while we were away. So this trim is a very common trim. Uh, it goes around the edge of tiles just to cover the edges. You can see I have some actually right here on the wall. Um, so it's used quite a bit for edges or going around windows, that sort of thing. It comes in different uh, thicknesses for your different thicknesses of tiles, different finishes, yada, yada, yada. The most common one is aluminum. So it's very easy to cut. Uh, I, I always just cut it on a power miter saw. And uh, with this trim, I usually miter the corners. I, I doubt that you can zoom in close enough to see that, but I, I miter the corners. In some cases, you can butt them together, but generally a miter looks better. So, so this trim I used around the window. Uh, you, you might want some kind of trim or a different tile to border the window, whatever it is. But uh, in this case, because we were cutting tiles up around the window here, we needed something to finish that edge. So this is the metal that I used, and I simply cut it on a miter saw. I cut it wrong. It had to be corrected, but um, anyways, that's, that's kind of how it goes on, or what I did there. Now, when I use this type of trim around the front edges here on a shower, tub shower installation, this is pretty typical about what I do. I've got my waterproof membrane over and it's about, I'm about an inch inside of the edge of the tub. And then I apply this trim to the wall, cut to length and apply it to the wall. What I use is a little bit of construction adhesive on the back, just a few dabs every six, eight inches, whatever. I use my laser level and I get a nice line here. I get it all lined up and then I use uh, a little wafer type screw. So it's a screw with a nice big wide head on it. And I stick this to the wall with the glue and I just put a few of these wafers in it just to kind of hold it there till that glue dries. Some guys will put their tile on and then shimmy this little strip in there. Um, I'm not a big fan of that because uh, if your mortar's already dried a bit, it's sometimes hard to get in usually end up scuffing up your wall and in my case I usually have painted walls by the time I'm at this point so I don't want to go back and fix the wall so I just glue it to the wall then it's already there in place I've got a easy um, uh, measurement you know I've got a start and a stopping spot so that's the way I like to do it so that's that's that trim and you can use it there's different profiles colors everything so Okay, so that's what we did around the window. That's what I screwed up yesterday and uh, kind of forced us to jump forward here a little bit. Um, so once I had that on, then I did this mosaic tile, this border, which is the same tile that we used down in the niche down here. It's got some glass, it's got some kind of imitation marble or whatever that is there. So these types of tiles typically come looking something like this, okay? So they got the jagged edges so that they all fit together as, as you go. And they're applied on kind of a mesh, mesh backing so that they're in a sheet. So there's a lot of different things you can do with this. You can see that I only used half a tile. And all, all you have to do is simply decide how many strips you're using and take a utility knife, cut that mesh, and uh, you can make this... Uh, 
work out to whatever sizes you want. Now just be sure that when you do that, it works out that if you pick you only want three or four of these, that you can interlock them all together. Like some, some of them have a bit of a pattern too and you might be restricted to half tiles or maybe four inches or whatever. So just kind of play with that a little bit to be sure that you can do it. When you're putting these on, just like I did down here in the niche, I uh, applied my mortar to the wall and then I put the tile in place and I used a float. You see me use a float, just kind of push against there, a rubber float, and it just kind of flattens out the wall. And I did the same thing for these. Uh, one thing you can't do with these is back butter them. If you back butter them, you just end up forcing that mortar through all those joints because the back isn't solid and you got a real mess. You all, already with these, you'll end up with some places where you got mortar coming through that you're gonna have to clean out before you grow. But if you try to back butter this, you're just gonna have a mess and, and it's gonna take you forever to get it cleaned out. So, okay, so cut it to the, the size that you want, apply it to the wall, use your float to flatten it out and embed it in the, in the mortar and uh, you're good to go. Now, something else with these tiles, and you can see up here, I've got a series of little spacers here in every one of these grout lines. The reason for that is when you start stacking other weight on top of these, they have a tendency to want to crush together because they're just in that wet mortar and all that's on the back is that, that mesh, right? So they want to slide together. So you need to put spacers all the way in there at the points where you're supporting the tile row above it so that the weight kind of transfers through and down to this where it's solid again. That's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes, depending on how the day's gone, I'll even get up to my border, put it on, come back the next day and do the, the upper tiles. So this has a time to set and I don't have to try to force all those little spacers in there. Um, in this case I didn't, I put the spacers in to carry this weight, okay? Um, then, uh, as you can see, I just progressed up the wall. Uh, I thought my planning was right, but you can see I've got a little strip up above. If I would have planned out better, I maybe would have cut the bottom row above the tub, you know, two, three inches shorter so that I had a wider row up there or something. Or maybe even one more row of these would have been enough to make that not have that little skinny row up there. But anyways, that's what I was left with. I just took some more tile and cut some strips in there, continued with the pattern that we've got. And uh, after it's all grouted, that very top joint at the ceiling, we'll get uh, some silicone in it. Okay, so we've, we've done the, basically finished those two walls and we're around to this wall now. And uh, I even did this one chunk here while I was waiting for our cameraman to be able to be available today, uh, just so I could keep moving. But I wanted to leave this so that we can go through this more closely in detail. So I've got my tiles uh, cut to size for these two rows, but I don't have any holes drilled in them. So we're going to go through that. So I'll just find a place to set this. So what you want to do, you obviously can't test fit anything here with with the pipe sticking out. Uh, so you've, you've got to mark your center point of this pipe here. Now, like I said earlier, because I use this as my starting point, I can measure off of that. I can measure off the tub because my tub's in straight. What I could also do if my tub was a little wonky, sometimes the top deck of the tubs are wavy and you're not able to measure off them. But if you've got a laser level or you've marked a line on the wall with a level, you can also measure down from that. So as a reference. So I'm just going to measure here and get a center point of this tub spout uh, pipe. And what do I got there? I'm going to call that too many lines there for me to look at today. So I'm going to call that about 15 and 15 sixteenths. So I'm just going to transfer that onto the tile here so I don't forget it. 15 and 15 sixteenths. And if I measure down from my line to the center, I've got four and a half. Now this hole here doesn't have to be perfect because your most tub uh, spouts, the decorative piece that you put on there, 
you know, they're about oh, a good two and a half inches or so around. So I use a little bigger hole. I think I've got an inch and a quarter uh, hole that I'm going to drill for this. That gives me a little bit of play in case my measurement's off or I've got to adjust the tile and it's still going to cover. Okay. So that's going to be that tile. Now, because I've got the laser, I can also measure up and measure my uh, center point of this next tile as well. Okay, so this is one. And I know what my layout is. Uh, this line, actually, I don't have it lined up with my... I could, I guess. Basically, that's where my grout line is going to be. So I'm going to have a tile piece over here, just like what this looks like here. It'll be the same row as that. Okay, so my tile is going to be here. I've got a factory edge and a cut edge. So that's, this is up for me. And I simply do the same thing. I can measure off my, my laser uh, level there, laser lines. I've got three and five eighths to the center. Three and five eighths. And I can measure up off of there too. And I've got, let's call it five. So that's my center mark there. Okay. With this hole, this is where the shower fixture is going to be. It's a single lever. Uh, you've got a big discussion plate that's going to go on here. Um, so this hole, in this case, the important thing is that it's big enough to allow this lip of our seal to stick through because it protrudes from the wall. But the hole's still got to be small enough that the scussion plate covers or any seal on the back of the scussion plate covers. So uh, I had measured that already and uh, I need my hole to be, you know, basically under five inches for the scussion and I need it to be about f at least four and seven eighths for that rubber, okay? So I'm going to go basically draw out a four and seven eighths hole. We'll come and test fit it once and make sure that it's going to fit in case I need a little adjustment. Um, if you're not using a seal like this, you have a lot more leeway. You could actually have about a four inch hole and you'd be, you'd be good. As long as these screws can come through, um, you'll be fine. So, so we've got those two marked. Uh, this is up and we're going to go out to the uh, shop and cut these. Okay. So this is our tub spout hole that we wanted and I'm going to use this, uh, hole cutting, uh, thing for ceramic tile, glass, that sort of stuff. This one doesn't have a pilot bit. Some will have a pilot bit, so you would want to pre-drill a little bit of a hole here just to put the pilot in so it doesn't skid around when you start. This one doesn't. This is, I think they call this a 30 degree bit or semicircle bit or something like that. And the reason for it is you have to actually start it on a bit of an angle till it gets biting into the tile and then you can slowly rotate and get your now these take a little bit of knack of getting used to uh, because they will have the tendency you get going you get started and all of a sudden it wants to wheel across the tile so you need to be using both hands hanging on I've got my tile clamp down uh, you also need to keep them damp once you once you get it going there you want to cool it and keep it wet to pro pro uh, prolong the life of the blade ear protection eye protection um, I like these for these types of holes because I've, I know I've got a little bit of play here so I don't have to be perfect but it does take a little bit of practice to know where you need to start in because I don't I have a, a center hole mark but I don't uh, I don't have a center pilot bit on here so you might want to buy one that has a center pilot bit just for your uh, your own use so okay so I'm going to start this and I've got my drill on just normal drilling action and in high speed. It takes a little bit just to get started. Once you have a bit of a divot there, you can just 
get a little bit of water in that and that'll help it go a little longer. You can see how the water stays there. So I've got that hole drilled and uh, I can just take a rag or whatever and clean the tile up. You get a little bit of dust and kind of some mud on there. You can see it drills a nice hole. Okay, so I'll set that one to the side. Now the other one I'm going to do is this one here. So I've got my hole marked out. I just marked it out to the size I wanted so I have a line to follow. And I'm going to clamp it to the workbench. And then for this one, what I'm going to use is a grinder. And I don't have a guard on my grinder. You'll probably want to have a guard. You might want to use gloves. Uh, but basically, I'm going to use the grinder to work my way around that, that hole or that line. And I've just got to do a little by little and you'll kind of get the feel of it as you're going. Okay, so we'll do this one. So there's a good example of what can happen and that's probably because I had this clamp on this corner. I should have maybe just had the one clamp on. So we're going to have to redo that. This tile is super hard so I'm going to try something a little different too. I'm going to actually cut a little ways through on the back side and maybe that will prevent it, this one from breaking. And I put just one clamp on too. These tiles are really warped and I think it just had too much pressure on it. Hopefully that'll help us out here a little bit.
Here goes nothing. Okay, so that worked a little better, and I'll go give it a test fit. Okay, so uh, a couple te test fits later, and we got got that all fitting for the big one. The little one fits fine, so so we should be good here to go ahead and put it on. So I had skimmed this out earlier today. I had some leftover mortar, so it's all been skimmed out. So I just have to notch it now. It's a little harder working between two surfaces now, the tub and those upper tiles, but we'll get it all done. Okay, that's one. I'll back butter this tile. I gotta get out of the tub. Okay, and I've got my laser set up there so I can get my height here. Lift the tile up off the tub. And it's got to be a little bit higher over here. Close. one little guy. Okay. And same thing with these two up here. I always try to butt my factory edges together. Looks the best to put your cuts against, you know, stuff like this or edges. Okay. And then we'll back butter this one here a little bit. Trying to get all the little goobers off. Okay, so we got those couple in. 
There, just like that. Well, that pretty much does it for how to tile shower walls. So we've got this project uh, to the grouting stage and we've got other videos showing how to do some of these other items like this tiling this niche and those sorts of things. So you might want to check those out on our channel. And please click the thumbs up if you like what we do here at houseimprovements.com. Uh, as always, you can leave a comment below. Uh, you can go to the forum if you have questions about your pro tiling project or any other DIY uh, house improvement type project that you have. And of course, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. So please check those all out as well.